103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Hello, and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LP FM, right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday morning, June 20th, 2021. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Doubter 5, and as usual, we have our co host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. One fist for justice, the other fist for. <laughs> for what? <laughs> Just this piece. I can't tattoo yeah, it. Yeah, piece. Okay, letters. just cut out. Yeah, I know. I don't know what happens. Uh, we got a bad anyway, one. Yeah. What are you going to do? Today's guests are Doubt Fire, uh, George Brooklyn, or two and a half, Dread Pirate Higgs, and the John Richards. Oh, oh yeah. all. International show for sure. Uh, Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. Conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faith, gods, holy books, and superstition. Wombat, what's our topic today? We had so many topics going into the start of the show, but uh, generally we're going to touch on a couple of subjects. One being, is religious thinking harmful? And two, does it do more harm than good? and what are else flourishes from those kinds of conversations. But before we get into it, I'm gonna throw it up to our own Dread Pirate Higgs for our weekly invocation. It's noodly. Uh, uh, Dear noodly pops. Lord, <laughs> who art in a colander, hallowed be thy noodles. Thy flood be rum, thy sauce be yum, with meat as it is with vegetables. Give us this day our garlic bread, and forgive us our cussing, as we put up with those who cuss against us. O lead us not into ketoism, but deliver us some carbs, for thine are the noodles, and the grosses, and the grog, whenever and ever. Raw. 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 Now, here's the thing. I'm trying to do some sodium reduction. Does Pasifarianism offer any salt-free or salt-reduced sauces for pasta, or is that blasphemy? Absolutely. No, no. Fantastic. You're, you can do whatever you want with your sauce. Guys, I want to do a quick, super fast, you won't even realize it before it ends, super, super quick, wonderfully short summary of how everybody's doing all at once. So we're all just going to say how we're doing right once. No, wait, never mind. I have a better idea. Dread Pirate, one at a time. How you been since last week? Well, not too bad, actually. And I was just on with uh, John Richards uh, yesterday for an hour-long uh, interview with his uh, Free Thought uh, channel. And I thought that went really well. We had a good chat and uh, fun time. So, yeah, that was uh, it was good. Now, here's the question. Were you actually able to meet on time with each other? <laughs> yes. Yes. We, in fact, got together 10 minutes beforehand to make sure we were all uh, queued up. Fantastic. Um, yeah. And also, we had our, our pasta on Friday. So, uh, much feasting and grogging and pasting. Very, very cool. I'm happy to hear that. That's good vibes all around. John, we'll throw it to you. How, how, how have you been? How's the interview? How's the family? Well, everything's fine here. Thank you very much. I, I got an excellent Father's Day present. Ooh, which okay. I, I could be wearing, but I'm not. It's a shirt. So I'm very pleased with that. What's the shirt and, say? Uh, you can't just leave it at that. No, it's not a T-shirt. No, it's, it's a, I, I guess it's a denim. Uh, can, I, can I mention a trade name here? Sure, yeah, absolutely. It's that firm that makes jeans. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, so I'm not very bad. pleased with that. Oh, very cool. Yeah. And uh, not only was I hosting Dread last night on the Free Thought Hour chat show, but also I staged my usual weekly Global Atheist News, yes. which went out just before. So I'm, I'm trying to take over Saturday nights. <laughs> not bad yeah i've been seeing a lot of updates on my youtube and the stuff that you produce is pretty good quality too where can people check that out again just at the start of the show could you plug that thank you yes it's uh, go to youtube and go to free thought productions free thought there's, productions there's an archive of all my shows yeah global atheist okay. news that's one of the playlists yes yeah. that goes back to the beginning of this year every week but there's other playlists that go back 
three or four years. Wow. Because I've been, I've been making these videos, doing these live streams for a long time. Very cool. All right. So now we're going to throw it up to Scott. Scott, you got a light show. You got laptops going on in the background. What's going on? Oh, man, I am learning my new software that I downloaded. And so, you know, I'm just tinkering around trying to figure it out and optimize on that. So other than that, I mean, uh, the new music project um, started for me. I think I mentioned it maybe last week, but it's um, Deborah Magone, written by mm -hmm. Grammy you know, songwriter, Grammy winning songwriters and stuff like that. This is dedicated to secular humanism. Ooh, cool. The song is called A Better Place. It's how to make, how we can all get along and talk to one another and make the world better and work together um, towards that end. So it's a really good song. It's picking up steam. We're even talking about a guy named RuPaul doing the I know that performance is. on it. Yeah, so I he's feel like interested. I know that guy he is. wants to jump on it. Nice. <laughs> so... That's going on. Last weekend, I uh, my um, my channel called Exploring Epistemology. I had uh, Anthony Magna Bosco on last weekend. That went really well. Good. And uh, we're just looking forward to this next show that's coming up Tuesday. And we're gonna I'm gonna try to do some SE with a Christian presuppositionalist on his whatever he wants to talk about. So, so that's going the... on. And other than that. I would say I measure greatness not based on the actions of one person, but how well that one person can help other people become great too. And you have been instrumental in helping me find good sense to look for and, and mm -hmm. good advice to figure out like what the best quality of sound is. So there's a real greatness there. And I thank you very much for sharing it. Uh, oh, sharing you're it welcome. No now, problem at all. We're going to go to the troublemaker himself, George Brown, George Brown. How you been since last week? The notorious. I've been good. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> How's life been in general? Have you found any new coffee that you you're into? Yes. <laughs> well, yeah, I've been uh, d digging around at the at the stores. Nice. I, I, I I'm slumming. I I went to Walmart and I got Walmart's. Um, what is it? Uh, Walmart's own espresso. Interesting. Interesting. All roads lead. And it's Walmart. right. It's wonder. right here in front of you. <laughs> Not bad. Right Not now. Bad. But, Review, um, what do you think? 10 out of 10? 11 out of 10? Um, it's, it's surprisingly decent. It's surprisingly, right. surprisingly decent. decent. That's, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I've been getting into rock and roll and into um, country music. Lately. I'm a classically, tra classically trained musician, so I'm, I'm just kind of like rediscovering pop, the it, it, music in the popular realm and uh, oh, enjoying no. myself. You in, are like immensely. leagues behind. You're leagues behind. Let me tell you something. I saw, uh, I had a friend who like was a fr had a daughter who sent me a uh, YouTube video of a song that she liked, and it was like something by Lil Nas X, and I thought I was good on like where pop music was for kids these days i have no clue what i was listening to i had no clue what i was watching <laughs> the video had 230 million views and i'm like oh my gosh this so this is where we're at now okay well well i i go back to where why do fools fall in love you know mm, yeah yeah so so i'm yeah, i'm going everybody. back into the the beginnings of, of rock and roll. Nice, nice. And of course, R and B was way before it too. Yeah. Fair enough. Confession. Oh, yeah. oh go for it, Sean. I I remember that too. <laughs> so you, oh, I was just going to say a word that I'm not supposed to say. Yeah, please. <laughs> so I no. will say it. <laughs> Larry, uh, yeah. throwing it up to you. How you been since last week, my friend? I'm doing just fine. Uh, just doing uh, some writing i got back out yesterday and rode for about an hour or so it's beautiful nice i try to do it early in the before the heat in the day um there's my back oh there we go see it uh for youtube viewers and uh i'm really enjoying it i got i put over why's it got a for sale sign on the front bike. of it it's got a for sale uh, sign on it yeah that was a couple of years ago but i'm 71 so if anybody wants to buy it i think i'd let it go <laughs> but, uh, i'm sure my uh my better half would be happy for me to do that nice nice nice. she worries about me okay 
Uh, I've been uh, learning how to play disc golf since uh, COVID's been over, been finding some new activities to do outside. Thing is, my form's not very good, and I've been doing nothing but nine holes for like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I feel like I'm doing harm to my back, but what could be more harmful than disc golf than religious thinking possibly? Oh, there's a transition for you guys. Larry, why don't yeah, you, you go? Larry, why introduce the topic? The to- what do you think? The topic? Yeah. Oh, um, well, I've got, I based what I was going to say today on a, a podcast, I mean, a blog that I have on my site on digitalfreethought.com slash blog. And it's called, What is So Wrong with Religion? And uh, we could go, I mean, I could sit here and talk. Uh, I know you reading could. this article for the next <laughs> hour, but uh, I'll just go over the very first thing, okay. which is divis- it's divisiveness. Um, it divides us into us them groups all over the country. I was talking, I mean, all over the world. I was talking to one uh, Christian the other day, and I was telling him how divisive religion was. And he said, yeah, be sure. But if everybody was a Christian and understood the truth of Christianity and, and converted to Christian, we wouldn't have any more wars. I said, you mean like in Northern Ireland, you know, where the oh, Christians are fighting each other and have been for years and bombing each other. Um, mm-hmm. But it's it's more than that. It's like uh, the decades of violence between the Jews and the Muslims, uh, the decades of violence between Catholics and Protestants, uh, capital crimes against women's son- health centers. I mean, they feel so um, emboldened by their religion, self righteous, uh, yeah, self righteous that they they would they were hack- have actually gone into women's health centers, uh, abortion clinics, if you want to call them that, and killed doctors before. Uh, and and threatened the people who are waiting outside, uh, trying to come in. And not to mention 9-11. Uh, mm-hmm. It was us versus them. It was a religious faith-based act. Uh, and then we had a war on terror after that, more or less based on religion. It was a Christianity against uh, Muslim, Islam um, at the basis of it. But it's just on and on and on. And that's just the violence. And that I didn't really get into the history of it, like the Crusades, the uh, Spanish Inquisition, the witch trials, um, uh, the perpetuation of uh, yeah, sure. slavery, John. just on and on. John, yeah. it looks like you wanted to comment. Yeah, and, and it's in all directions, isn't it? I mean, yes, the the attack on the Twin Towers was a Islamic fundamentalist attack. Right, but it was. Short, shortly afterwards, George W. came on and said, you're either with us or against us. So mm. the divisiveness is mutual. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, I would say this. Uh, it's not that religion, and here's my slightly opposite take. I know it's a bit nuanced, but I don't think religion makes people want to cause harm or have wars. I think human beings have a proclivity to conflict, especially in groups, because it's very hard to make empathetic people or understanding, and it's a lot easier to react in a violent way just to immediately protect the things that you you hold dear. Like, we evolutionarily sided towards quick reactions of violence to protect the things that we care about rather than empathetic understanding of people. But because of that, religion also is a tool that helps people make very rash generalizations about other groups of people. And I feel like that's the crux behind it. Uh, John, what do you think? Yeah, well, you're absolutely right. There are other reasons for tribal divisions, but there's only one reason which is based on a non-evidential deity. There's only mm-hmm. one that's yeah. based on a non-evidential Well, deity. yeah. I, they, all, I've had other, people... all, all of the other reasons for having tribal differences mm. might be considered to be genuine. Mm-hmm. You know, real grievances. Mm-hmm. But this one that's based on him up there mm-hmm. has never been shown to be substantiated by any evidence. <laughs> I'm going to think about that. Larry, what do you got? No, I was, I've was. i talked to people and they say, well, you think get, getting rid of religion will get rid of war? It would get rid of one of the major reasons for war. We'd mm-hmm. still have wars, but they would be, like uh, John was saying, for other reasons like territoriality, yeah. commerce, um, mm. uh, maybe even race. Um, you know, there are other reasons that people fight each other, but one of the main reasons is is religion. Yeah, and it Scott. would get rid of that reason. Yeah, I was going to say that. Um, I, I, of course, I used to be a Jehovah's Witness, 
And um, one of the things that they taught was uh, not to eat blood or take blood products. And so they would let their children die rather than take a blood transfusion. Um, so these are harmful things that are rooted in religion. Now, other, now that one right there, I was, before I became a Jehovah Witness, I never even thought that blood transfusions would be against God in any kind of way. So um, the thing about that is, you know, religion directly teaches people to behave a certain way that's harmful directly. Mm. So that one, I think, is a really clear cut example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I am. I'm putting a lot of thought into the, what you were saying, John, in that um, I cannot come up with examples immediately of other supernatural based causes or rationales to go at war with another country. It tends to be the case that the religion aspect tends to be one of the sole super supernatural motivators or, you know, you know, not really supernatural, but just in that category of, yeah. I have an impression of what this being's telling me, let's go to war because these guys have a different impression of what a different being might be telling them. And that's justification enough for us to go over there and take their stuff. Yeah, we agree. And then that happens, but yeah, yeah. Well, I've never heard of a war that's been fought over my ghost. <laughs> Though I'm, you know, human history is a long time. You never know. Maybe so there yes, is examples of that though. I think it's true. obviously more devastating. The recent examples that we have where we can see, you know, that kind of rationale being used as motivators. So it, even if it happened 10,000 years ago, like clearly now has more damage. Scott, what do you think? I was going to ask you, um, what about the Sikhs? I think they're a pacifist kind of religion. Do they are, what sort of harm do they cause? I'm trying to think. I just don't know much about them other than the fact that they're pacifists. And I think they're a branch of Hinduism, yep. if I'm not oh, mistaken. No, they're not. Um, George, no? Okay. you got to wait. You got to wait. Uh, Go on ahead, go on ahead, go on ahead, go on ahead. And then we'll go to Dread. George, what do you think? <laughs> I was just going to talk about the Sikhs, um, as I understand them, which is not a whole lot, but I have met a couple. Okay. Uh, first of all, the, the Sikh temple near where I used to live, uh, they had a shootout, hmm. <laughs> in fact, among the members. So... Uh, it's it's a fairly new religion, and there's a lot of economics involved in it, and I don't know much more than that. I think I think Sikhism predates even America, so like it's all you know like a realm of perspective of like how new. I would I don't know if they have like a Punjab has a standing military or anything like that, and I don't know what the ideals are in terms of like violence or not. Maybe. Dread, you. I saw your hand raised, or John, would either of you guys like to fill in on this? I just want to cut in because you said Sikhism predates even America. Yeah, like we haven't been around for a long time. John, <laughs> John's the resident English person here, so he can he can laugh maybe for a couple thousand years longer than us. <laughs> but China people are like, <laughs> two thousand years, get out of here, right? Uh, well. Stonehenge is reckoned to be about 6,000 years old. You can't claim Stonehenge. You can't claim Stonehenge. You get Henry the First, and that's it. Maybe William the Conqueror at most. All right. Uh, and, and there, was, there was a Woodhenge. There was a Woodhenge before Stonehenge. <laughs> okay. Dread, did you want to weigh in? Did you want? Oh, you're, you're on mute, my friend. Yeah. So my understanding is that. Uh, 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 Sikhism is almost atheistic. They do have a God belief. <laughs> there is a monotheist aspect. Well, they, it. yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's a lot different than what our standard Abrahamic uh, religions are. Sure. I'll about. give you that. So it, it has its own sort of class, I guess. The, the issue, only issue why I bring that up is I tend to see a lot of atheists who are atheists but don't like the atheist label call themselves spiritual or Buddhist or chic. And it's like those have God aspects or dogma associated with them. And it feels like you'd be better off just calling yourself an atheist, though I wouldn't say it, call yourself whatever you want to call yourself. But don't take something that's already an established thing and skew it through a personal lens 
where it's like, ah, but Ooh. this is really what atheism is. Like, no, no, you're just further muddying the water. I, I, I worry about mm. stuff like that. Larry, you want to weigh in? Yes, I was just going to say that we're talking about religion in general, and uh, but I think that there's a definite uh, escalation of violence in the Western religions versus the Eastern. The Eastern religions are generally uh, philosophical. They're generally atheistic, like Taoism and Shintoism, Confucianism. Um, several of those religions don't even have a God. They have ancestral worship. Mm. Uh, so they don't tend to toward violence so much as the Western religions do. The uh, monotheistic uh, totalitarian religions of, uh, say, Judaism, Islam, and uh, Christianity. That's they're more uh, good points. Also, great history of wars. <laughs> too, oh, yeah. Right. So, like, Thanks. it's uh, it's one of those things where it's like, it only religion only gives a bit another excuse, and perhaps even like a more more popular one because I can see Western religions being a motivator for a lot more damage than Eastern religions. It's like, yeah, yeah. He thinks well, the cup's half I full. Think we, right. I think we should move on to some other th things. I've got like a list of 27 things here. Oh uh, one of the other things that religions tend to do, which is uh, harmful, is they tend to suppress re or resist the advances of science, uh, the knowledge that we generate through science. Um, the original sin itself comes from man eating from the tree of knowledge. Mm. And that was a bad thing uh, yeah. in the Christian Judaism. Uh, tradition. Um, it's like the more you know, the worse it is for them, accordingly. Um, but think about uh, how they oppose the the teaching of evolution. Uh, many uh, cosmology, even the Pope himself one time said that we shouldn't uh, examine the Big Bang because it would be in the, it's reserved for the domain of God. Right. So we shouldn't even go there and look at it. <clears throat> Et cetera, et cetera. They've uh, been resisting a, a scientific advancement down through the ages. Yeah. Dread, you just took yourself off mute. Did you want to say anything? No. Cool. But I agree. Well, let me tell you this, I mean, Dread. Not only are they suppressing science, but they can't even let you take a picture with a hat on at a driver's license. <laughs> Man, evidence and think critically. Yeah. I, you know, there was a period of time where people thought the stars were a blanket with pop mm -hmm. holes marked mm -hmm. pop through them with light shining through from the heavens into the sky. And, and in fact, there are flat earthers that still do. No. Well, there you go. And you know what? A lot of flat earthers <laughs> fundamentally critical. I'm just going to throw but, that out mm -hmm. as well. Like yeah. you, oh, I've the seen age enough, of the earth is something else. Yeah. yeah. I've seen enough documentaries <laughs> on flat earth where I'm like, these guys are just hardcore Christians. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, but they uh, uh, go ahead. Sorry, go on ahead, Larry. Go on ahead. I was just going to say that they fight the advancement of our, our carbon dating, radiological dating, because they can't have an old Earth, because the Bible says it's a young Earth, and they can't, you know, they can't have the contradiction there. Right. Um, <clears throat> evolution, of course, because they have Adam and Eve. They fight. Um, against teaching evolution in school and have for over 100 years now mm. uh, officially on, in our legal in our legal establishments and let Dred Pyre go for it I was going to say I, I was just watched a program here produced by Bill Nye um, and, and, and his uh, interactions with Ken Ham uh, you know there's the, the arc uh, that he's got down south there somewhere and then the uh, creationist uh, um, creationist museum and I mean clearly some of those things in there are a travesty to uh, current understanding of, of humanity and, and of the universe and of nature right. and all the rest of it it's uh, it's an incredible uh, hour to watch yeah and and to speak on Ken Ham we actually Eric and I went Boudreaux and I went up to the Ark Museum to do uh, SE with the protesters of the of the Ark as well as the counter protesters and we found a great way to de-escalate and have some really good conversations there those are on my YouTube channel but I would say this I don't care if someone wants to build a big boat because they like a book I it, what bothered me was that they used tax money from the state to yes. support that and continue to use tax money to fund it, despite the fact that as a commercial entity, it makes no profit whatsoever. It actually just spends money. I feel like it's a travesty that state can support one religion pet project 
or an arts and crafts project and it's like stop stop please um john got a question for you we were talking about uh religion inhibiting science did you have examples of that in 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 english schools because i can tell you in in the south we know the big ones that get hit but in england is it a similar weight pretty much most english schools allow the teaching of evolution um, there's one or two that are unofficial schools. They haven't been recognized. They're illegal schools where oh. they secretly meet. They, they shepherd their children into a, a big house very often in London. Oh, and yeah. they hold a, a Jewish type of school. And there the, the curriculum is entirely different. And if they are discovered, it's a police matter to get Wow. Them. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, it does happen. It's, it's but, considered child indoctrination and that's illegal? Yeah, yeah. You can't... I love it. A school must be registered. Animal. It must be registered, and these are unregistered. So that is that is outside of the, the jurisdiction. George, but I, don't know whether I've, I don't know whether I've told this before, but um, I, I used to teach A-level biology, which was uh, the pre-university qualification. And I started one year with uh, a class in the subject area of evolution. And shortly afterwards, the, one of the key girls who was one of the star pupils, potentially, came to me and said that my parents say I've got to change subject. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've seen that and I've heard that. Even at our school at Georgia Tech, I've gotten comments like that from people where it's like, I feel like this is challenging my religious beliefs. I don't think I want to be an engineer or yeah, I should change yeah. my subject. And That's right. Depressing but I, I wanted to pick up on something that um, Larry said, because as, as a, an ex-science teacher, oh. I, I've got some tactics to deal with some of these young Earth creationists who disrespect carbon dating. They're using the wrong, they're targeting the wrong tool, because the clue is in the name. Carbon dating dates things that contain carbon, mm -hmm. you know? And, and that is pretty much organic things, things that were once alive, not fossils. <laughs> in fossils, the material has been replaced by rock. It's been ossified in one way or another. There are a number of different methods in which that occurs. But sure. the point is that carbon dating is only a reliable uh, method for about 50 years back, 50,000 years in the past, because the half-life of carbon-14 simply isn't long enough. And to date things that are older than that, that, you know, give the truth about the age of the Earth, we've got to use other isotopes like uh, uranium radon, for example. Nice. Very cool. Thanks for that lesson. George, it sounded like you want to say something a bit back. Do you still remember? Oh, uh, do I remember? Um, I wanted to ask John something that he said. Uh, I was curious about this. You you said um, you were talking about some sort of a school that was religious, and you said it was a Jewish type of school. Um, can you elaborate on that, please? I could Google it and send you a link. Hey, how about um, that? I don't, I don't have it in here, I'm afraid, but I know that... Um, <laughs> It, it comes to my attention periodically because, as you know, as I said at the, at the start of the show, I do a weekly Global Atheist News show. Sure. And I get a lot of items which are about religious horrors, religious atrocities, and mostly from countries like Nigeria, Pakistan, sometimes uh, Iran, although news doesn't come out of there very well. And uh, in my crawling the internet for information which might find the, it might be a useful news item, it's come to my attention that there are these illegal Jewish schools that are operated. They're, they're a fee-paying school. They're not recognized by the country. Mm. And because they are secret, they do their own curriculum. You know, it's like being homeschooled. You so why are, they, why are they illegal? That's my question. Right, it's because to to hold a school in this country 
you must be registered, you must be on the list, on the register, so that you can be inspected mm. by Her Majesty's education inspectors to see the staff. Mm. I dig it. I dig it. So there, I'm assuming that there are legal Jewish schools. Yes, there are. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Okay, that that's, was my question. <laughs> so, Dread. See, Dread, where, where, where I live, where I live here, um, there are... Um, uh, Jewish temples listed among the churches that are listed in the weekly newspaper, and they're they're not real Jewish uh, temples. They're fake, as far as I'm concerned. They're messianic, after the fact, uh, Jewish right. organizations. So I, I get confused, and that's why I wanted that's to totally Guys, we're Jesus. nearing the bottom of the half hour pretty soon. Jesus Jews is what you so mean. So it's yeah, yeah, rounding out. Larry, would you mind taking us out and then we come right back in and we'll catch up where we left off. Alrighty. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we'll be right back after this short break. 103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Dr. Five, and we're on WOZO Radio 103.9 FM. L I'll get it right in a second. 103.9 LP FM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday, June 20th, 2021. And now let's talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK, founded in 2020. I'm sorry, make that 2002. We're in our 19th year. ASK has over a thousand members and we have weekly Zoom and in-person meetings. The in-person meetings are at Barley's Taproom and Pizzeria in Knoxville's Old City out on the patio. Hmm. Uh, you can also find us on Facebook, meetup.com or at knoxvilleatheist.org or just Google Knoxville Atheist. It's just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and do a search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one. Start, Start one. one. Right. Well, mm -hmm. where you want to pick up? We were learning about Jewish schools and the illegal Jewish schools, which is a brand new concept for me. But Dredd has now something he'd like to bring to the table. What's up, Dredd? Well, it's just, just going back to something uh, John had mentioned earlier about radio carbon dating. And that there's a, a number of scales by which we measure things in the past, dendrochronology being uh, counting tree rings, um, and that be a simple, very obvious way of determining how old something is, and then how that matches up with radiocarbon dating, and that and these overlapping scales of geologic time uh, allow us to uh, have considerable confidence in each of those methods of dating things. So I just I just wanted to make that point. That's a great point. Absolutely right. They correlate each other. They correlate, yes. exactly. Right. Different systems telling the same narrative is a very compelling mm -hmm. series of tests in science. Yeah. Right. I would like to say this, though. <clears throat> My issue isn't so much with the veracity of element dating. Uh, I, have, I have pretty... I, I have a very good degree of skepticism for it, and it stood up to that skepticism, which makes me very uh, confident that it's a reliable test process. What I have an issue with is the double standard that's applied. When, someone, when a Christian hears carbon dating and they think, yeah, but that's not organic material, and they, they, you know, there's a lack of scientific veracity for these kind of elements, and, and fluoride actually has a different half-life versus when they apply that same standard to their God belief. And it's just like, well, it's true because it's in a book. And my pastor said yeah, it's true. It's like you have two completely different levels of skepticism that you're using. And the one that you have more skepticism for, you're not allowing through. And the one that you have the least amount for, you're letting through. And that's dangerous. Mm -hmm. Scott. So ironic. Uh, just yesterday, I was having a conversation with a creationist. And uh, his biggest criticism against evolution, he told me, he said, see, the thing is you believe stuff and you can't, you can't sit there and tell me that you've seen with your own two eyes, you know, dogs coming from non-dogs. You've never seen that. So how are you ever going to convince me? And I'm like, but have you ever seen Jesus resurrected? Oh, you know, that's good. Like the apple and two standards. And yeah, that that argument, argument. That, it goes on and on. Yeah. yeah. And that argument, Scott, is what the Cam and Ham uh, uses often. 
Oh my gosh, that's so mm. silly. But yep. I would say this, it's pretty simple to say, hey, do you have kids? Yes. Do they look exactly like you? No. Do they look exactly like your grandparents? No. What do you think you call that? You call that small changes over generations, mm, evolution. right? But there's a word for that. You might want to look it up. It's awesome. It's the third pillar of biology. Uh, Larry, you had a comment too. Do you, was it just to tell us to take a break or did you have some compelling new things? Are you new? moving down the list? Yeah. Um, yeah, I can certainly go on to the next one. Um, one thing about religion is that they tell, it teaches us, especially the Western religions, not, not so much the Eastern, is that we're born tainted with sin. We're impure and dirty uh, from being a baby. I mean, we're, we're born with guilt and we have to spend the rest of our lives trying to make up for the sins of the first humans, according to, to them. So, I mean, you like start off in the hole. You're a sinner, and everybody you start is. Start with a you, debt. Yeah, that's right. And then you have to try to work your way back to it. It's like built-in guilt. Which you know, as a mental health perspective, isn't good for you. Dread, do you want to weigh on that? Yeah. Well, I was just going to say it's it's interesting that the whole, of course, the whole idea of sin um, is uh, you know inculcated into children and whatnot by people who claim to be the only way out of sin. Mm -hmm. mm, it is both the poison and the cure. It's like the guy who's selling yeah, you right. the, the antidote is also the person who injected exactly. you with the poison. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's yeah, Dan Barker. Well, John, oh. one at a time, what do you got? It's a protection racket. The it's case a racket. Is a, yes. uh, it, is. It, it is. About it. it is. Yeah. Larry, what do you got? You're right about the, uh, you're right about the mm. mental problems that it causes, but there's a, there's a lot of suicidal homosexuals who think they're, they're the way they are made is sinful. Right. Suicidal trans, right. suicidal lot of, yeah, especially. Yeah. 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 Larry. Well, I like to put it, the, it's like an, you have an omniscient God watching every thought and every move and every action ready to cast you into, into hell, you know, an eternity of painful torture for the slightest infraction. And mm -hmm. To me, that's just the very definition of a paranoia. You've got mm. somebody watching you all the time. Mm. And, and that can't lead to positive outcomes in mental health. Mm. Yeah. But he loves you. <laughs> yeah, but he loves you. <laughs> right. yeah. That's even worse. <laughs> of course, George, that's reinforced, that's reinforced with Santa Claus. George, you want to weigh in. So what's up? Yeah, I got a couple of things to, to mention. <clears throat> um, the, the first one is that uh, as a as a very non um, non observant person with a Jewish background, I'm I'm not aware of Jews being born with original sin. Mm. And um, that was the whole garden I was just, thing. Yeah. Well, it somehow it just doesn't seem to um, come out in the wash. You know, uh, I'm not. The, I mean, I, the, I'm just never heard it. of people. But George is, a, heard of it. George is an organic atheist. So like, he's never yeah. had that. Yeah, I, I'm an organic atheist. Yeah. And it's maybe something that I don't know, but believe right. me, I have never heard. Um, I mean, coming out of a, a, a city where there are a lot of Jewish people around. Yeah. Um, Do they believe you know, in sin? Do they believe that sin is real? Yeah. Larry, the only thing I can answer you with is that I have never heard a Jewish person use that term. Or come what anywhere term? near it. What term? Sin? Uh, original sin. Yeah, but do, I'm know, asking about uh, sin. Anything now, like original it. sin. Just sin in general. Were there sins were in your community, mm -hmm. even as an atheist? Not, not. Uh, it's just not a big deal. Okay, so it was yeah. aware, but it, it just as, wasn't a, a prevailing thing. That's fair. That's yeah, funny that right. Christianity right. Would, would take the, that term from the Old Testament, hmm. uh, the situation where Adam and Eve uh, sinned against God, and they called it the original sin. But the Old Testament was the Jewish Torah. Yeah, mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Yeah. However, yeah, there's honestly, a lot in the un, the interpretation of it, though, among among the the living practitioners today. Let's say is is very different. I, I think, and of course. You got to understand about the Jewish religion is that there are at least three major divisions of it, mm. and and that the belief structure may not be quite the same from one to the next. I'm going to throw this out about so, Christianity. Like the main thing I've always was taught from the Old Testament was Genesis, like all the stories that were there. So 
the concept of religion, original sin was something that was at least on a monthly basis drilled into us, whether we're Baptist or Methodist or Pentecostal or evangelical or, or uh, Methodist, if I had said that already, like whatever church we went to drilled in the idea of original sin. So right. Christians really have taken that and made it more popular. So I could, I wouldn't be surprised if for Jew, it's like, why there's so many other chapters in that book. It's a pretty good book. <laughs> John. Well, I want to finish John. what I was, what I was saying, if I may, sure, um, sure, sure. W- which is the next part of this, which is that around here, we're where I, a lot of people who believe in a get out of jail card, which is that at the end of it all, if you confess that you believe in our Lord, you're going to go to heaven anyway. So it doesn't I'm matter. I'm just saved. Yeah. That's their yeah. little yeah. tagline, yeah. bumper sticker, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. saying. John, you look no, that's something else I don't have experience with, so I can't say. John, did you want to say anything? You were looking relaxed yeah, there on the beach. Judaism seems to me to be a religion which you can unobserve quite mm. and get away with it and still sure. be considered to be, to be a Jew, and you, uh, yet you will still check the box for Jew when, he, when it comes to selection uh, describing your religion. Sure, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is one of those things where it's like as much a cultural identity as it is a religious practice, and you can easily yes. bifurcate the two. In right, yeah. Yeah. And that's not limited to Jews. It's no, no, no. Pasifarians got that too. <laughs> There's yeah, black right. people who got that as well. Yeah. Hey, George. Anglicans too. George, you're back on the mic. What's up? So I want to give I want to give an example of that, um, if I can tell a little yeah. story. Oh, George! Uh, I was the short show. Go for it. Go for it. Go for it. Go for it. <laughs> well, uh, uh, many years ago, we were we were living on a farm in, in a out out in the country in Connecticut, where there were a lot of Jewish farmers, and my landlord was a Jewish farmer, and and he was um, an Orthodox Jew, so it was it was Saturday, and my wife and I were driving down the road, and my landlord was trudging down the highway with his son, and he waved at us. So I stopped. He said, can you give us a ride to Temple? I said, sure, get in the back, you know. So Max got in the back seat with his son. And I said, Max, aren't you supposed to not be driving in a car on the Sabbath? He says, ah, it says in the Torah, you're not supposed to drive. It says nothing about being a passenger. Hmm. (laughs) Now... I, I think that this, uh, I have to say that that um, in my experience, uh, um, there's a tradition in the Jewish culture of of reasoning and arguing and you know working things through, and and I think that's a lot of it. You know, is is to look through the Torah and see what you can get away with. Yeah. Interesting, Scott. Yeah, uh, just real quick. One a uh, couple years ago, kind of a long time ago, a Jewish kid. Um, on a Saturday, he asked me to uh, light his cigarette for him, and he gave me the lighter. And I was like, what? <laughs> and he said, because I can't make fires the Sabbath. <laughs> yeah. I understand in Israel, they have a whole tradition of doing stuff like that. Mm. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of... Maybe it's not so much an innovation of science, but also just practicality as well in a lot of cases where it's like, hey, I need to light a fire or tie a shoe or drive myself somewhere. And um, and also to go back to the mental health aspect, like if you had a kid, if you're a single parent and you have a kid that's like having a seizure and you need to take him to the hospital and you can't drive on Sabbath day, you're not going to wait till Monday. But if you take him to the hospital anyway, you know, breaking the rules of your religion, is it worth the extra guilt? You know, well, you can uh, always ask for like forgiveness. That. You can, but why even why would you have to ask for forgiveness if you're trying to protect your kid in the first place, right? I hear you. Yeah, no, I hear you. Mental, mental. Larry, abuse. what do you got? What's next on the list? Uh, well, you know, you talk to Christians or, or whichever religious you're talking to, and they'll tell you that the reason they believe it, even though if it doesn't make sense, is faith. They got to have mm-hmm. faith. They've been told all their life, you know, it's just believe on faith. It like like faith will give them an answer, uh, but it doesn't. Mm-hmm. It just stops them from asking questions, Ooh. and you can prove it to them real quick by saying, uh, you know. 
are Muslims correct? Uh, is is Muhammad the latest greatest prophet of God? And is he, you know, they don't believe that Jesus was the the prophet. And the you know, and the, no, they're wrong. They're going to hell. Well, they are going to hell by practicing their faith. Their imams and preachers tell them that they have to believe what they say based yeah. on faith. Every mm -hmm. other religion in the world uses faith to mm -hmm. believe whatever they want to, right. but Christians or whatever will think that, well, they're going to hell. Yeah. Uh, faith doesn't these give are, you the answers. They're all mutually exclusive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. John, weigh in. Yeah, I go around, I get invited to speak to humanist groups and atheist groups and secular groups and university groups and places like that. And very often I give a presentation on belief. So I go through my reasoning and I end up showing them that belief is just an opinion about the unknown, you see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I cap mm. that by saying... Oh, that's good. And faith... Mm. And faith <laughs> and, and I want to devalue belief. It's, it's regarded to be too important. So mm. I, I tell them that I get to the point of belief is a, an opinion about the unknown. And then I top it by saying, and faith is belief on steroids. <laughs> <laughs> mm. yeah. George, in your, in your upbringing, was faith at all ever a component? We were talking about sin earlier, but have you ever used faith? even colloquially? Oh, absolutely not. Absolutely not. It was, it was completely alien to me. Okay. I mean, it's like um, I had a playmate down the street. He was raised in some sort of a Baptist type or, uh, orientation. And one day he started talking about God to me. And I, I didn't know what he was talking about. He said, don't you believe in God? I, I said, gee, I don't know. I, I went and I asked my mother. I said, do we believe in God? She said, no, we believe in nature. I said, well, Lee just asked me. I said, what should I tell him? She said, tell him we believe in nature. So I went back and I told him I believed in nature, and he didn't understand what I was yeah. talking about. Uh, sure. So we were even. <laughs> I, can, I, I can throw this out real quick. Maybe we can get a quick roundtable before we close out the show. But we have a very religious president, but one that is also open to the idea that there are other religions available. Like, I think one of the things he did was protect abortion rights, despite the fact that he's very Catholic on his own right. Very, very good. I'm America first, my own religion second. Great example. Uh, we didn't always used to have good presidents. And when we're going through that election night, I was very, very freaking out because it looked like we were going to have another uncomfortable four years. And I use uncomfortable as a euphemism in this case. But mm -hmm. one of the things that uh, our current president had said during that night was to keep the faith and just keep believing, despite the fact that the numbers were shifting slowly towards his end. And I had no other good scientific evidence to prove otherwise, other than just staying optimistic and hopeful. And I think in that night, faith did help me get to sleep a little bit better uh, that night. I'm not saying faith, this is what I'm not saying. Faith is not a good decision-making tool, like to, to come up with conclusions, but I do think it's valuable in keeping you feeling nice. <laughs> and as long as you're not using it as a, as a means to determine what's true and what's not true, you can use it as long as you're not uh, uh, doing that or using it to harm other people. I feel like there's some value there. Larry, what do you think? Does that seem reasonable? Well, we have to be careful not to equivocate. Okay, um, go for it. If, if you look up faith in the dictionary, you get two or three different definitions. Sure. Words can have different definitions. Absolutely. Uh, our, the faith you're talking about, like the faith of uh, stepping on your brake and having faith that it will stop your car, yeah. uh, that's, uh, that's reasonable expectation based on everyday experience mm -hmm. and years of everyday experience. Mm -hmm. Religious faith, I like to think, and I, and I think the dictionary would agree with me, is believing not only... Uh, without evidence, mm. but in the face of contradictory ev evidence. Yeah. So you don't want to start using the word faith interchangeably when you're talking about religion and everyday stuff. You ought to make a make a that distinction. Is a, that is a very good point. I'm actually going to take. I'm not, I'm going to say it's not distinct ver the the break example. It's exactly the. I don't have any scientific evidence to prove that Biden will win. In fact, it looks like he won't win, but he told me to keep faith anyway. And so in spite of the, the obvious 
data of numbers in front of me. I'm just going to go to sleep and hope that by the time I wake up, it's going to go like this, despite the fact that it's still trending this way. And I felt like you made a prediction. In that aspect, in that aspect it's like, ooh, there's a little bit of faith here, yeah. but I'm not yeah, going to use that, that as In a that tool. case, you're, you're interchanging his faith with wishful thinking. It's wishful thinking at the best point. Yeah. yeah. And in my head, you just faith is a lot closer true. to that. Yeah. I feel like faith is a lot closer to wishful thinking than a lot of yeah. Yeah. definitions in the Bible. Scott, what did you think? So I was just going to say, you, ju you just proved that faith works. <laughs> <laughs> Dread. You... My, my favorite definition of faith is, is faith is belief without evidence. Believing without so, evidence, yeah. And I think it's important making sure that we also don't conflate the words faith and belief. Mm. Belief is based on observation, on Knowledge. experiments, and you know you have uh, you actually don't have faith that your brakes are going to work. You have belief that your brakes mm -hmm. are going to work based on the evidence mm, that, um, yeah, like I, that, that supported it. Can I can well, I throw that out? I actually like Dred's definition here. I would say knowledge is what you can demonstrate to be the case, right? right. If I can't demonstrate it, but I still can be inclined yeah. to believe that it's true, then I have faith because I just lack the demonstration for it. Yeah. Maybe I have some good evidence to support it. And then when I have no evidence, I'm in faith territory where it's just wishy-washy mm -hmm. land. Larry, what do you think? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm a little, I'll shy away from the word belief like that because there's so many believers out there that believe on things because of repetition. Mm -hmm. uh, things that they are told are true mm -hmm. and they take them on, uh, on faith and end up believing on those and having these whole set of beliefs that are not based yeah. on any fact. Yeah. So I'll go back to what John had said. Yeah. I devalue belief because of that only because I'd rather have knowledge and I'm willing to say, mm -hmm. I don't know it. If all I have is belief and faith to support an idea, I'd rather just be like, Hey, I don't know that that's on the shelf. And I don't know is a wonderful answer in at least yeah. in the realm of science. So John, what sure. do you think? Yeah. Well, a couple of things. First of all, you, as Scott said, you proved that faith worked, but ah. no better than a teddy bear, which could also have helped you to sleep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I did have a teddy bear growing up, and I don't know where it is anymore. Isn't that one of those sad things you think about as an adult? Kids keep we'll, teddy yep. bears. We'll have, Got, give it, send us an address, we'll get you a new one. John, could you plug your show again? <laughs> where can we find you at? Free Thought Productions on mm -hmm. YouTube. Very, very uh, cool. Yeah, there's lots of stuff there. Who's your next guest? Have you already lined it up? Well, it may be the bearded heretic, but Ooh. I'm still waiting for him to confirm. Last time he was due to come on, he had to pull out because of a family event. But Fair. I can tell you that the week after, that's uh, July the 3rd, I've got Catherine, what's her name? Catherine Johnson, Catherine Roberts. She's a very interesting Canadian from Nova Scotia who spent about 30 years as a pastor, and then about a, a 10 or 12 years ago, not, not pasta. Uh, no. Sorry, oh, sorry, pasta, sorry. Pasta. So sorry, so sorry. <laughs> the, only, the main Canadian I know. Uh, <laughs> is, 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 my brain was like... She's at the other side of the country. She's in Nova Scotia. Okay. And, but she, she gave up the cloth about 10 or 12 years ago. Hmm. And she, she's very active now in helping people to recover from religion. Well, speaking of interesting Canadians, Dredd, where can we find your stuff at? Well, I stream this uh, live uh, every Sunday at 8 a.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time or Pacific Daylight Time, depending which uh, it is. And it's under Mind Pirate, M-I-N-D-P-Y-R-A-T-E. Very nice. Scott, yeah. I know you're looking forward to getting back to that music station behind you. Where can we find some of your stuff and keep track of you know your progress? You have a music blog too? What's going on? Yeah, um, the best place is to go on uh, dubshine.bandcamp.com. It's where I'm putting all my latest releases and stuff like that that I want to showcase, and you can download it from there. And, um, of course, you can find me on Spotify, SoundCloud, everywhere else, but that's just a really good place to go to see what's happening with me. Very nice. Speaking of music, George, you're getting into rock and roll. Please give me some recommendations. Who, who uh, you I don't have any. You, you, you've been listening I mean, I've been just so listening much. to James. James. Oh, I don't know. Why do fools fall in love? Johnny Mitchell, James Taylor. Nice. 
very you good. know names that pop pop up. I, I find them to be fun, very good musicians. So, you know, very very cool. Yeah, you you might love math rock since you have a classical background. There's some really really intricate mathematics that go into the percussions of math rock. I'll make you some recommendations after the show. But let, you can find Great. me on Let's Chat on YouTube and Let's Chat in general, uh, Patreon, all that stuff. Uh, we'll see you next week. Larry, I have this real considerable problem. I know we're at the end of the show. We've been talking about it. And I didn't want to say it, but I don't know what atheism is about. So like, <laughs> can you, we maybe should have defined it, but do you have anything that I could to yeah, like, maybe matter of fact, figure out more I stuff about on, I have a book on that. It's called Get out Atheism. Of town. I do. It's called Atheism. What's it all about? It's available on Amazon and uh, it's also available on Kindle through Amazon. Uh, my own content can be found at digitalfreethought.com. Be sure to click on the blog button for our radio show archives, atheist songs, and many articles on the subject. If you're on YouTube, uh, you can find me by searching for Daughter 5 or Larry Rhodes. Uh, if you have questions for the show, you can send them by email to askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org. If you're a member of clergy, if a preacher, a pastor, or a priest, but no longer believe in the claims of religion, there is help for you at theclergyproject.org. That's clergyproject.org. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. This has been the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we'll see you next week. Say bye, everybody. Bye. Bye, everybody. everybody. Bye. Yo. Goodbye. Am I going to your hell? I don't have hell, but you're probably Giddy going hell. to the Islamic hell or the Christian hell or <laughs> any other hell.